Tyrants fall, disorder sweeps over the land, riot and bloodshed multiply, and sometimes, mistaking vengeance for justice, the people seek out their former torturers to vent their rage upon them. vengeance and to preserve the authority of law in World War II. The Moscow Declaration in November 1943 laid the basis for fair and orderly trials of all war criminals. The evidence was compiled not merely from the accusation of enemies, but directly from the records left on every side. Records of wrongs so calculated and so devastating that civilization cannot afford to ignore them, for it could never survive their repetition. The physical task alone was tremendous. Hundreds of tons of documents, military, political, and economic, were assembled, copied, sifted, and translated. And from the files, the suspects emerged. Already many had confessed their guilt in suicide. Himmler, Goebbels, the mayor of Leipzig, even the mayor's wife. But others who had no wish to die were tracked down to their hiding places and summoned to stand trial. In accordance with the Moscow Declaration, persons accused of localized atrocities are tried at the scene of their crimes. At the Belson trial alone, the defendants were held responsible for four million murders, more than all the population of Norway. Justice can never bring back the murdered millions, but in their name, the nations are solemnly resolved that the fate of the guilty shall stand as a warning to would-be aggressors everywhere. of Europe have been the trials of national traitors, Caruso of Italy, Quisling, who gave his name to history, and the grave diggers of France. For sometimes poisons that infect the state can only be purged by painful surgery. The thorniest legal problem before the nations was the disposal of those charged with international crimes. No effective legal machinery had ever been established for such cases, and already the vanquished were hoping that history would repeat itself, for they remembered how Germans had sidestepped justice after World War I, for the Allies allowed Germany to try her own war criminals to the great advantage of the general staff. Syria of victory, Lloyd George swept into post-war office in the popular slogan, Hang the Kaiser. But the Kaiser did not hang. Instead, he settled comfortably in Holland and became the woodcutter of dawn.
But today, the city of Nuremberg, already rich in tradition, has witnessed another historical event. There, for the first time in history, four great powers have welded their criminal procedures into a single cooperative trial. In Nuremberg's battered courthouse, the war's major criminals were indicted. The significance of this event has been explained by Justice Robert Jackson, prosecutor for the United States. To Russian and French jurists, said Jackson, the Anglo-American legal system seems unduly tender of defendants and to be loaded in favor of delay and in favor of the individual against the state. To British and American jurists, on the other hand, the continental system seems summary and to load the procedure in favor of the state against the individual. Yet in eight short months, these differences were ironed out and an international military tribunal was established to ensure the swift action demanded by the world. At Nuremberg, the Allies indicted the defendants on four charges. The charge of war crimes. On this count stood Dönitz and Raider. They condoned murder of prisoners on the high seas. They practiced methods of combat in direct conflict with the laws and customs of war. The charge of crimes against the peace. For these, Ribbentrop and von Papen must answer. They conspired with traitorous minorities in other lands to bring about wars of aggression. Under cover of diplomatic immunity, they encouraged the overthrow of peaceful governments by lawlessness and violence. The charge of crimes against humanity. Accused on this count were Schweitzer and Rosenberg, authors and organizers of religious and racial persecution. They brought a new word into the language of human pain, genocide, the murder of races. The best means, they said, is organized under feeding. most revolutionary of all was the charge of a common conspiracy. For the first time in history, the peaceful nations have declared it a crime to plan aggressive war. This they have done, remembering how aggression casts its shadow before it. the rim of the world, Japan's grim hour of trial has also struck. Her guilty men will be found by the same procedures, judged by the same tribunals, condemned to the same penalties. Already their trials are proceeding with decision and dispatch, for the world is resolved to make war less attractive to those who are privileged to lead the people. And looking toward that goal, the peaceful nations have combined to utter this solemn warning that those who bring tragedy to the peoples of the world must suffer the people's justice. <laughs> 